we have the DL04 meter for the Yamaha Bolt. Um, this is with the black case. Um, these are brand new. Um, we're actually gonna put it on uh, this extra bolt here that we are uh, turning into a chopper soon. Um, but we're gonna put it in that stock position. Um, we're also gonna see how it kind of mounts up with uh, the bracket and all that and see what, what options are for that. So pulling this out of the box, um, comes with some pretty basic hardware. We've got the uh, speedometer itself. And then uh, of course, uh, instruction packet. I'm sure it's got instructions that are just as good as the COSO TNTB, which isn't saying much. Um, and then uh, it's got your hardware, uh, three bolts, uh, one spacer and uh, three washers. So uh, those are what we're gonna use to uh, mount it up on the back of this guy. Uh, all we gotta really do here is um, unattach these two bolts so that we can get this bracket off and then we'll be able to unscrew the old speedometer. Uh, the old speedometer has its own cable. Um, that cable should plug it directly into the back of this guy. So if that's the case, it'll be pretty straightforward to plug it in. And then um, just bolt it all up into place. So we got our speedo off here. Um, you have to pull off that boot right there and then uh, unclip it. Um, to get all that off, you'll probably have to, um, if you have a stock setup, you have to loosen up all those uh, wires a little bit. A lot of them are all tied down and stuff. You may have to unclip them, but uh, shouldn't be too hard. You just kind of have to finagle them through these brackets you see right here. Um, once you have those all finagled out and the bolts out, you should be able to get the whole thing off. Mounting this up is going to be fairly simple. We're just going to pull these screws out and then we're gonna use the new screws in our new hardware kit and we're going to screw those all on. So here's the Speedo mounted up in the stock position. Um, you will see that you can kind of see the original mount kind of peeking out from behind it in a couple spots. Um, not horrible, but you know, um, because it is a smaller speedometer, you know, you can kind of see that stuff. Um, if we kick it on, this is what the display looks like. Um, the, uh, we can start walking through some of the settings menu and kind of see what we got going on in here. But, um, looks like that's, uh, trip A, then we got trip B, then we have trip O or zero. This is likely the service trip. So um, you would reset this every time you actually want to switch uh, or do your oil change. Um, and then this is your max screen, which will show the max speed you've ever hit while the speedometer was installed. Um, it will also show your max temperature as well as uh, the gear you were in when you hit max RPMs and it should show your max RPMs. And then we are back to the odometer screen. Um, we do have a neutral display here. Um, this will read your gear, which is, uh, you know, one through five. Um, and then that will be programmable. So we'll actually enter, enter the programming mode here. I'm pretty sure this is by holding select. Um, so when you hold select, you'll see uh, we go into the first menu here which is the clock, so we can choose the units and such like that. Um, press select again. If we want to go into this menu, we would press and hold select, but we're gonna skip it. Uh, we can also set the units here for the speed as well as the temperature. Again, um, to enter into that, we would hold select. Um, we'll press select and skip by it. Um, the display brightness, which we, we can actually play with that and see what it looks like. We'll hit so hold select there. Um, so we're gonna bump it up. Yeah, it gets a little brighter, a little dimmer. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea how that works. And then uh, press and hold to exit that screen. Um, and then the tire percentage. Um, this is, needs to be set so that the speedometer actually reads the right speed as you're riding and you're racking up the right number of miles on the speedometer, um, or the odometer, I should say. The um, tire percentage on the TNTB was about 63 to 65%. It just depends on your tire size and other factors. 
Um, if we keep going here, this is the learn section for the gear. Um, if you wanted to do this, you would actually press and hold and enter into the learn. Um, and then it would run you through this wizard where it makes you go from like, you know, the lowest speed in one gear to the lowest speed in the next gear, you know, and you just basically um, go as fast as you can in each gear from, you know, a starting starting at speed. So, you know, zero to 20 in first gear and then, you know, 15 or, or 20 to 40 in second gear, et cetera, et cetera. Um, looks like we accidentally exited because I talked too long. So I'm gonna go back into that. If we uh, keep going back around, uh, we'll get back to that gear learning. Um, and then over speed, this is basically something you can set to say, uh, blink my screen when I go over a certain speed. Um, there's also a shift light if you wanted it to basically light up, say a light in here, probably up here, uh, that would just warn you and say, uh, you need to shift um, because you're over RPMs. Um, this is your overheat settings. So if you had, um, if you went over temperature, then you could just basically choose the temperature that you want to say, you know, is too high and warn you. Um, volt warning. So the lowest you want it to start yelling at you to tell you that your battery is low. Um, and then also this is the setting for the trip, um, the trip zero, which is for service your service trip is what it's called um so currently it's 1700 miles most likely you probably set it around 3000 which is your typical oil change um and then for all those use for this warning light to show up um but like i said uh rpm is what it is by default and then you can choose a different method so you do a high flash you do a off um, you do a steady a steady light um, and then a S flash, which S flash is default, meaning slow flash. Um, moving on, you can turn ABS on or off. Um, it would be off on all American model bikes. Um, for the European bikes, you'd want to turn it on. Um, and then this is to set your odometer. So you can set the total, the amount that's on the odometer. And then this total is actually the amount of miles that have been racked up on this odometer specifically and you cannot change that value it's always set and it always you know registers no matter no matter when you set it so this the set will actually uh set your display odometer your or your odometer's display on this screen um, as you see this one's currently zero miles because it has not been written or used um, there is a gas light. I believe it's one of these two right here. So that will light up when you're when you go low on gas. So it is nice that unlike the TNTB, you've got a separate warning light for the for one of the whatever you choose to put there, um, and then you have a separate gas. And then um, there are our signals, um, just like the stock one. You know, it just goes back and forth like that. Um, and that's about it. Um, it's pretty good speedo. It's nice looking, very, you know, very clean and a digital display is nice as more, more in line with what came with the bolt. Um, I, I personally like the analog, um, a bit and, uh, I'll show you that a little bit if, uh, you guys are curious. Um, but the Koso TNTB is here. Um, so we got that on this bike. And uh, if we switch this guy on and kind of see how this works, this is a reverse display, um, which is uh, difficult to get in the U.S. Um, I bought this a long time ago, and uh, there were only 10 sold in the U.S. when they did it. Um, I don't know if they sell them anymore, but um, the reverse display, basically this area here is blacked out, and you can choose a color, um, whereas the, the ones in the... Uh, the ones in the U.S. are typically colored to background and then uh, black on the foreground. Um, so, but this basically has all the same functions. There's trip A, there's trip B, uh, your service trip right there, which you can see that I'm uh, about a thousand miles out from needing another oil change. And then uh, the time for the clock, uh, we, we got
got our temperature for the engine um, and then of course uh, voltage and the max display just like we had on on the other one um, and then you can see the odometer so um, that that's kind of everything uh, and it's got the same menu basically as the uh, the other COSO the co the new one um, it's the same menu um, if I press and hold select it enters into that same and so I did review the manual there and this is not colorable so this is the color that you get you get the white on black um, with the colored you know uh, colored indicators um, but as far as coloring the screen you cannot change the color of the screen so that's something to consider that is a kind of major difference between the two so even if we go into this display menu here you're going to see you know it's got brightness as an option where we can you know lift that and lower it um, and get it to where we want it but as far as uh, changing the actual illuminated color uh, it does not offer that up. Uh, these currently retail for around 439 MSRP. Um, the COSO TNTB, those are going to retail for, I think, around 350 um, Maybe a little more. Can't remember, but those are around that price as well. So I wanted to see if um, the COSO TNTB relocation bracket would work on the DL04. Um, unfortunately, it really seems like it's kind of a, uh, a losing battle here. Um, major reason being that they did redo this plug to be part of the unit. And as you can see, you can really see the, um, the circuit board back there. So you don't really want that getting wet. You definitely need the boot from the OEM from the OEM uh, line, you know, shoved in there nice and tight. And uh, if you were to shove that in there nice and tight and have that boot on there, and then you went to mount this guy up, um, once it's mounted up, there's really not any space for that boot to fit through that tiny little opening. Um, you may be able to, if you, you know, have an angle grinder and you want to chop this guy out a little bit, you could probably get that, that boot in there properly. Um, but even then, the other issue becomes that that line is very short. Um, the OEM line is literally just enough to get it right over here. Um, to get it mounted up back here where this bracket would typically go, um, which you would mount it they you can either mount it underneath these right here or you can mount it underneath here but I've seen when you mount stuff underneath here the bracket or, or the speedometer actually bangs against the triple um, so I usually suggest mounting it up top um, but if you mounted it up top you got to think like okay your speedometer is basically going to be up here and uh, getting that line all the way around the side um, which is attached to your signal line so the signals actually tee off of the same line here um, so even if you get that undone and you like basically chop the signals away from this um, you're still going to have to try to reach all the way up around this side and uh, there's just really no way to reach that far six inches off of the COSO TNTB that's uh, running to your main harness um, you may not be able to do it unless you want to basically um, chop this main harness and splice in extra wiring you'd have to and there I think if I remember correctly there are 14 wires here so you'd be uh, crimping in 14 wires or not crimping in but uh, soldering in 14 wires uh, the best way would actually be to chop this that way you can reuse this boot and then solder in you know another 14 wires and then on top of that you know hack this out you know, so it's a little wider and you can actually get that whole boot in there and keep it waterproof. So I hope you guys liked the video. You're able to kind of get an idea of this new product from COSO. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool little speedometer. There's some gotchas, but uh, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, I, I like it overall.